right. <clears throat> We've been talking about John 13, 14, 15, and one of the things that went, uh, we talked about on Saturday or Sunday was uh, John chapter 15, when Jesus talks about, you know, you are, you are part of me, I am the vine, you are the branches. Uh, I'm just going to pull that out real quick and read that. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Uh, then in verse 7, he says, If you abide in me, and my, word, uh, my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be his disciples. Just as the father has loved me, I also, also loved you. Abide in my love. So Jesus is saying, you know, he wants us to abide in him. And by abiding in him, we're going to bear much fruit. And we need to abide in his love. We need to continue to abide in his love. And I couldn't help but com compare what Jesus is doing here and what he's saying and what he demonstrated in, in John chapter 13 uh, with you know, John C. Maxwell when he talked about... Um, the f five ways, you know, you teach somebody, teaching somebody how to do something as like five steps. You know, first, I do it, you know, as a leader, I'm going to do it so you can, so I know how to do it. So I do something and then I want to train you. So I do it with you and then you do it with me. You know, so if I'm teaching you a new task, then you, you know, you're going to, I have to know how to do it, you know. So Jesus has to know how to love. So he, you know, and it's easy because he is love. So he comes to earth and demonstrates to us. He does it with us here on earth with his disciples. He demonstrates love. You know, he's, he's doing it with them. And then he has them do it with him. You know, number three, you do it and I'm with you. And then number four is then you, you do it by yourself. You know, you're, you can do it by yourself. And then step five is you can do it and, and have somebody or somebody else can do it with you and learn from you. But the cool thing the amazing thing with, with what Jesus is doing is that he, he's, he's, he is love. He comes to earth. He demonstrates love for us. He, he loves with us. He, he, he shows us how to love. He does it with us. And then when we get to this part number four where it's like we're supposed to do it by ourselves, we, we never actually get to that with Jesus because he's always with us. You know, He's actually doing it through us if we allow him to. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this in John chapter 15 about abiding, like being, abide in my love, like be in my love and be abiding in me. And you're going to be able to continue to, to replicate and continue to do these things that I've told you to do. You know, in John chapter 13, Jesus is, he, he demonstrates service and he demonstrates servanthood, but he's not, he's not serving as a servant. He's serving as a son. And that's, we have to get to this place where we, we know who we are and, we, and we, we understand like, man, I'm a child of God. I'm, 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 you know, my shirt says royalty on it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm supernatural royalty. I've, I've got the spirit of the living God inside me. And we understand how to serve one another. A lot of times when we have like a really empowering, really, you know, a, a, a culture that empowers and, and really gets people to get, be firm in their identities, sometimes we can neglect on the service end of things and we get, we get kind of caught up in who we are. You know, pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. You know, I'm pretty amazing. You're pretty amazing too. And we're all, we're all like super powerful people. We all, you know, filled with the Holy spirit. We can all do these amazing things. Uh, but that's why Christ came and he demonstrated servanthood so thoroughly in, in washing the disciples feet, like washing feet was like, that was like a servant's job. That was like gross. It was dirty. You know, and sometimes people are like, hey, we should do a, we should do a foot washing service. I'm like, man, that's gross. Like, like that's just, I couldn't do that. You know? I mean, I love my wife, but I, I, I could wash her feet, I guess. You know? I, I wipe my kids' feet off with little things. You know, what do you call those things? Wet wipes sometimes when they're, you know, because they run around all the time. They're always getting their feet dirty. And Eva loves to color herself with markers. 
all the time. She did really nice. She was really pretty. Her, she colored her leg with a marker in like five seconds, or like three different colors. I'm like, oh, how'd you do that so quick? Wait till mom sees. Um, but like Jesus demonstrated like foot, you know, this foot washing thing, this act of service, this act of servanthood. And he says, he says something really striking. And a lot of times I think we, we skim through it. And we, I, I know I've skimmed through it so many times, but I wanted to draw our attention to this. Uh, okay. He says, for I gave you an example that you could also, that you also should do as I did to you. So he's saying, I've, sh- I've shown you how to serve. And he's, he's not necessarily talking about washing feet. You know, he, he used this as an illustration, as a demonstration. He's saying, I did this as an example that you can serve. Um, if, oh yeah, I'm going to back it up. Do you know what I have done? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also, to, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you should also do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Like if, you know, he's saying, if you know this, and you know it, because I just told you, you're actually, just knowing it is one thing, but doing it is another. There's, the blessing is in the doing. And he's saying, you are blessed if you do this. And he's like, I do not speak, you know, I do not speak all of you. I know the one I have chosen, but is the scripture be fulfilled? And he, he goes on to talk about Judas b- betraying him. Okay, but he already washed Judas's feet. And I think it's important for us to get this down. Like, God's grace isn't, you know, isn't, he's, he's demonstrating grace and he's demonstrating mercy and he's demonstrating love right here. And he's demonstrating service and it's, it's all tied together. It's all like, if you don't understand grace, you're never going to, you're never going to understand service. You could serve for sure. You can serve. But if you don't, if you don't abide in his love, if you don't abide in his grace, you're never going to be able to serve as a son, you, you'll be able to serve as a slave. If you don't understand grace, you're not going to be able to... <sighs> the, the understanding that grace isn't based on us is super important. Jesus washes Judas' feet along with everyone else's there. He, he could have waited for Judas to leave before he did that. But I believe he was so trying to impress upon us like, this, what, what I have done, is it dependent on you? It's not dependent on how you serve me. It's how I serve you. The, the unconditional love isn't based on us. It's unconditional love. That God's unconditional love is for us. It's not based on our merit. It's not based on our worth. It's not based on our goodness. It's based on God's amazing goodness. It's the sender is the one. Who's, who's giving us unconditional love. And when we, when we begin to mature and begin to grow and begin to get to this place where we can abide in, in, his, in Him, abiding in His love, what we do, what we think, how we act, it begins to change and it begins to mature. It begins to grow. Things we don't, as we mature in Christ, our thought patterns change. Our, our mind begins to get transformed. Into, in, we begin to transform into his image. You know, the, the thing with this Christian walk is the longer, I don't say the longer you do it, but the more open you are, the more, the more you can get transformed into Christ's image, like, the better. I mean, we're here for a, for a moment. Our life here is just for a vapor. When in the sweet by and by, we can be transformed in Christ's image instantly. You know, we'll be, we'll be, boom, it'll be an instant thing. But we can be transformed into Christ's image as much as we allow ourselves to be transformed into his image here on earth. Because 
He's literally, like, his spirit literally dwells in us. It literally abides in us. It's not a matter of getting God's love into you. It's a matter of getting God's love out of you. You know, he's already, he has already unconditionally given his love. His love is unconditional. He's, he is not loving us based on our goodness at all. And if, you're, if you have this up here in your head, you can, you can teach it and you can repeat it and you can, you can talk about it and you can think about it and you can read about it and you can philosophize, you know, be philosophical over it. But what you're producing is going to show what you really believe in your heart. And if you're producing like judgment and if you're producing conditional love, and if you're producing things that don't line up with God's unconditional love, that says that, that you're, there's something with your heart is not lining up with, your, with what you know. Your, your head knowledge and your heart knowledge are on two different pages. And that's what God is really calling us into this place where we're going to be able to line up our, our head knowledge with our heart knowledge and be able to get into this place of being able to abide in Him. And as we, as we learn to abide in Him, as we learn to abide in His presence and abiding in His love, the, 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 the element of being able to trust him is going to continue to grow and we're going to be able to trust like with the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son, the older brother didn't trust the father's judgment. You can see at the end of the story, he didn't tr trust the father's judgment with his, his, his lavish ability to forgive. The older brother was like, man, this is, this is a, like, this doesn't make any sense, you know? And a lot of times I, I think that we, as Christians, we can fall into that older brother thing and we can be like, man, this doesn't make any sense. Like, ah, and we, we want, we're, 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 we're starting to look for um, justice. You know, God is a just God. But when we talk about like fairness, you know, that's why there's a, the parable of the, the, the servants that go out in the field and work all day. And then some come later on and they all get paid the same. And the guys that got paid, the guys that got paid, you know, they, they agreed, they agreed on their wage in the morning. And then they were jealous that other people got the same reward they did, but it, but it was what they had agreed to. And Jesus goes on to say, Hey, this is how it's going to be. Like, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. If you want to be great, you have to learn how to serve. If you, if you want to be the highest, you have to become the lowest. If you want to be the greatest, be a servant. And then he also says that my father is greater than I am. What is he saying? Well, we are, are like the father heart of God, the, like the father heart of God, the heart of love that God has is a heart to serve us and to bless us and to take care of us. And that's what he wants us to have for each other. And when Jesus is washing the disciples' feet, like a lot of times we, we look at people and we're like, man, I know they're junk. You know, like, oh, like you know, you're, you're, you're in church. This is, this is kind of funny. Okay, so you, you come into church, and, you know, let's just say that you, you had a, a tiff with somebody here at the church, or, um, like, you know, oh, 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 those people! I, I think I think they might be having they might be having some some marital issues, or you know, I, I just I th I don't like the way you know he doesn't treat his wife well, or she's always doing this, and and then they're like greeting you at the door, and you're like, oh man, look at how fake they are, you know, and you start you know you know because you because you start to know people, you start to know their junk, you know, the better you know people, the better you know them, and guess what? We all have junk going on. Jesus knew their junk, like he knew their junk. He was with them for three years. He was intimate. He had an intimate relationship with him. He knew Judas' junk. He knew Judas was going to betray him. Like, he knew this. He knew Peter was going to deny him three times. There he is, washing their feet. Now, you come into church and you're like, oh, man, I know, I know. This, you know, this is an example. So, I'm using a complete example. Let's just say, like, Anna Marie is up here worshiping. Oh, she's worshiping the Lord. And, like, let's just, let's say that you knew Anna Marie had a problem with something like, wow, 
What's that? You're a smoker? Okay. We'll work on that, Anna Marie. Thanks for that confession. Okay. No, let's just say Anna Marie smokes cigars. Okay, let's say she smokes cigars. Yeah. Let's just say you saw Anna Marie out, out the back door smoking a big stogie before worship. And you're like, man, she's smoking a big stogie. And then she's up there worshiping the Lord. How do I get into this? I can't even. Oh, and you're like, so like, oh my gosh, these people. You know, imagine being the pastor of the church. Like, you know, everybody's junk. Like, like seriously. Like, like, oh, like, oh, everybody's disqualified. Hey, guess what? Everybody is disqualified. We're only qualified in him. Like, we're all disqualified. I am not up here because of my own merit. I'm up here because of his merit. When, when the priest would come into the temple, in the, in, in, I say I'm bringing, here's my lamb. I'm going to the temple to sacrifice my lamb. I got the priest. Jeff, come up here, be the priest. Here's my lamb. Here's the priest. I come into the temple. I present the sacrifice. This is the lamb. What does the priest do with the sacrifice? He inspects it to make sure it's perfect. He's like, oh, okay. The priest doesn't look at me and say, oh, you're not perfect. He looks at the lamb to make sure the lamb is perfect. And then, then the sacrifice happens. Now, Jesus is the lamb. He is the perfect lamb. Thank you, Jeff. That's awesome. He, he is the perfect lamb. Jesus is the perfect lamb. He is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. So when we come into the temple, when, 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 when we come into the temple with our lamb, nobody's looking. We're, God's not looking at us. When Jesus was the, is the lamb for our sacrifice, which he was slain for you before the foundation of the earth, God's not looking at you. That's the whole point. He's looking at the lamb, the perfect lamb, the complete and perfect sacrifice. And when we can get to this place where we can love people despite them, <laughs> despite them, because you know what? Like, like everybody is created in God's image. Like every single person in the world is created in God's image. That's one reason why we can like respect and honor love people is because like they're all created in the image of God. They're they're all His children, and a lot, of, a lot of them are lost. A lot of them are found. When we're talking about the found, like when you're when you're in the family of God, like your brothers and sisters in Christ, not only are they created in His image, but they have His Spirit indwelling on the inside of them. Their their sac their sacrifice was Jesus. He's, he's who qualified them. If he's qualified them, I can't disqualify them. If, if he's qualified me, I can't disqualify me. I'm not saying that we would have enemy smoke cigars on stage before worship. But I'm saying, I know, yeah, you're getting all excited. She's reaching in her purse, getting her big cigar lighter out. She was pretty excited when the Cuban thing got hooked back up there, I noticed. Um, my, my point is that we have to not look at people, disqualify them, and, and think that they're worth less than you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when I, when I look at somebody, I say, oh, they're worth less than me. Well, I'm saying they're worth less. <laughs> Jesus is not saying, Jesus is saying they're worthy. He's not saying they're worthless. He's saying they're worthy. And that's where we need to get to this place of love where we can just, we can abide in his love. We can begin to abide and we begin to mature and we begin to grow. And we begin to value and see people the way he values and sees them. And it's, but if you're, if you're in this place of abiding and growing and rooted and grounded in his love, it's, it, it becomes easier because you're living and you're dwelling with him and his spirit is inside of you doing these things. What God has called us to is completely impossible apart from him. Like it's completely impossible apart from him. Like everything about the Christian life is completely impossible without him. But the good news is that's the, the gospel is the incredibly good news because guess what? We're never apart from him. 
And as we renew our minds and our thoughts and our, and our patterns in life to that reality, like I am never apart from him. Then we begin, we, we begin to walk this out. We begin to live it out. We begin to act it out. 